Hello there. I am ready to play with some more glass and thought I would take you along in uh, the project. So I, uh, you know, a while back I did a glass buyout of somebody and she gave me this piece that she had fired and uh, got a bubble in it. And so uh, it was clear and um, coral, coral striker, light coral striker. And um, I didn't know what I wanted to do with it. I mean, this is not a piece that I, you know, it's not mine. Uh, so as far as I'm concerned, it's just scrap and I'm still on the scrap kick. And so I was thinking I could break this up and use it in something. I'll be honest. I mean, I'm sure the color is fine and has its own uh, applications for things. It's not really my color. Uh, so I don't really care what happens with this. I'd like to just kind of play. And I was trying to think about what would I use with light coral striker? What I, what, I think I'm going to break this up and do some sort of a scrap melt kind of project. And it got me thinking, let me get out my bullseye glass color wheel. Now, you're familiar with a color wheel. Uh, there are uh, color wheels that you can buy online. But Bullseye this year came out with a bullseye glass color wheel, which I think is super cool. And so if you're a bullseye glass user, uh, then this might be for you. And so you can get it, I think, from Bullseye. Uh, directly, I bought it from Cheryl at Art Glass City in Louisville, Texas, uh, which is where I get most of my glass. Uh, anyway, so let me show you how this thing works because I thought it was kind of fun. So as I get out my catalog and take a look, Light Coral is number 1205 in the catalog. And I decided to pick out, where did it go? Here we go, 1205. So what I'm doing is I'm lining up here, where 1205 is, this is my main color. This is my key color, or my, my starter, if you will. And then it shows you, I guess I could pick this up, kind of how you can find either a directly complementary color or a split complementary color palette or a triad. And in theory, then, if you pick these three, you know, colors from this one, this one, and this one, then they complement each other. And so uh, I decided 1205 is kind of lower in this color family here. Uh, what if I tried to match it with triad colors and go for 1414? And then on this side, 1426 is spring green. Uh, and so uh, I just happen to have some of both. So here is 1414, which is light sky blue. See that there? Let me do this. There you go. And then you're probably familiar with spring green. That's 1426. And so these three then, from a color theory standpoint, are uh, complementary colors. And I do think they look kind of cool together. So I'm not sure that I would have put these together on my own. So thank you, handy dandy color wheel. Now, what to do with them? Uh, I think what I'm going to do is bust them up and put them into a stainless steel mold and create a uh, scrap melt out of them. So let's, uh, let me go off camera here, think this through a little bit, and I'll come back and show you. Okay, so just in, just in case you think I edit and make everything go perfect in my studio, I think if you watch me enough, you know I don't, that I share everything. Uh, this clearly did not break very well. I got a nice solid break uh, the first on the first cut, and you're probably not going to be able to see this, but uh, you can definitely tell, let's see, I don't know if you can see this or not now, you can definitely tell that there are two layers of glass, and that the, uh, you know what, if I pick a thinner piece... The bottom layer was clear and the top was color. And so if I stack these on end, then I'm gonna have color clear, color clear, which I think was kind of cool. So I wanted to just play with trying to cut these up, but clearly they did not break in any kind of fashion uh, that's conducive to doing too much of that. I mean, I can still play with this. This is directionally fine, but uh, don't think it always works perfect in my studio either.
Okay, here is this crazy piece. So I took the light coral, I'm, I'm practically in my kiln, so I can show this to you. I laid it on edge, which then gives almost a clear strip between each each piece, and I tried to alternate it, and it's not gonna be perfect, and it's all gonna uh, blend together and melt over each other. And I mean, look how tall that is. That's gonna melt down crazy. Um, but then I took the same principle there, the theory, and I did blue and clear alternating and green and clear alternating until frankly, I just ran out of clear tecta and then I just filled the rest in with blue on the end and green on the end. And this thing's gonna flow and kind of go all over. I still think you're gonna see those lines to some extent, uh, particularly if I flipped it and refired it from the bottom, then you'll see them quite a bit. Uh, I don't know what's gonna happen here. Let's just try it out. I mean, it's scrap and it is a lot of glass, uh, but ultimately this will become a bowl if this all turns out well. So I'm going to put it in for a full fuse with a really long bubble squeeze. As always, I'll put the schedule that I used in the uh, video notes and we'll see what happens. So stay tuned. All right, here is this piece. This is crazy thick. <laughs> Let's see here if I can show this to you. I'm trying to be careful because there are some spiky edges, but look how thick this thing is. I mean, it weighs a ton, but I love it. The colors are awesome. So I've got some cleaning up to do here. It um, picked up some texture and wrinkles and stuff from the fiber paper that was surrounding my ring. Uh, I've used that fire paper in that ring a couple of times now, that uh, eighth inch thick fiber paper. So I'm not surprised that some of it started to come off and it kind of created some texture on the sides. Uh, it also separated in one spot where the two pieces, or where the two ends met. And so uh, I don't know if you could see, I mean, now I had a piece of papyrus there to protect the uh, ring from sticking to the glass but I got this little nipple that I gotta uh, grind off too. So what I'm going to do is get this all cleaned up on the edges. I'm gonna take this to my grinder and grind the edges all the way down and then get this piece super, super clean. And I'm gonna put it back into the kiln for another full fuse and allow it to spread out to get much closer to that six millimeter uh, thickness that we look for in glass. And then I will ultimately slump it into a bowl. But in terms of the colors and kind of proof of concept here, I'm really very, very pleased. So let me uh, get this cleaned up and ground up and back into the kiln. Okay. So I took that to the grinder and took the edges down. Now there were a couple of areas, I don't know that you're gonna be able to see this really well. There were a couple of areas where there were some pits in the glass that the fiber paper was stuck in. And so I took you know, the grinder all the way around, which helped great for that. I used my Dremel and some water to kind of drill in to make sure that I got all of that fiber paper out because I'm not worried about a pit in the middle there. I think that'll heal nicely when it fires. But if it's got any kind of fiber paper uh, trapped in there, then it's going to uh, to show up. It looks like I got a little piece that's left right there, so I'll get that. Um, but anyway, now the edge is not going to kill me. And um, as I cold worked this, I realized the green on one side and this salmon in the middle here is a lot thicker than the blue on the far end. So as this spreads out, it may kind of do so a little unevenly. We'll just have to see. And then I couldn't decide if I wanted to just fire it like this or if I want to flip it and fire it. I think I may get a little bit of a better result if I flip it and fire it. So because this is the part that was touching all the kiln paper, um, there could be little bits trapped in here. So I'm going to now take a diamond pad and some water and I'm just going to really work the back of this uh, and kind of rough all this up and kind of take the you know just teeniest tiniest bit of surface off of this before I put it back in and refire it so I will do that next.
Okay, I also decided to put what I have as Super Spray. Sometimes you'll find it is called Super Spray or Spray A. It's a solution that you can put on there to make sure that, or to try to prevent devitrification, uh, uh, devit. And so I want this to be super shiny. And so I did go ahead and put a coating of that on. Again, this one's Super Spray. You can find Spray A. Um, I've got something like that in my Amazon store, if you're interested in checking that out. The, um, the other thing is that a lot of people make this homemade. I have not done that before, but some sort of borax solution. I don't have the recipe. You can just Google it or search online uh, on Facebook or something. I'm sure you'll find it. So anyway, I'm going to go in and I'm going to take this on a long, long, long uh, firing because I want to ramp up real slow to be super careful here uh, because it's so thick. And then I'm going to um, take it up to a full fuse, hold it for a while at the very top so that it really spreads out nicely and uh, we'll see how it goes. I am gonna measure this before I fire it. I think it's about 12 inches, but I'm gonna measure it before I fire it and after just to see how that uh, changed as well. Well, that was close. <laughs> this thing grew significantly in size. Now I'm very happy with the uh, finished shape. I'm very happy with the edge of it, um, but it grew from 11.75 inches to 15 and a half so almost four inches uh is how much it grew fortunately i left enough kiln paper so uh i was good there and uh so now i'm ready to slump it it does have and and here's what else is close i only have one mold that this thing's going to fit on so thank goodness i have a very very large bowl mold uh it's a bullseye ball mold in particular uh, it has a couple of micro bubbles that kind of came to the surface and popped so the surface is not perfect uh, but it's actually, it's gorgeous. It's super shiny and uh, I'm real pleased. So I'm going to put this on the mold for slumping and we'll show it to you when it comes out. So the only mold that I had was the uh, ball mold that I have, a large ball mold from Bullseye. And uh, it turned out great. I'm really, really pleased with how this uh, looked. I think it's really cool how the lines on the edge ended up basically crisscrossing each other as this piece grew. Uh, I don't think I could have replicated that if I tried. It's just a really cool place, a piece. I also would not have put these colors together, but boy, I'm glad I did. Thank you, Bullseye Color Wheel. Hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please subscribe and uh, drop me a comment. Let me know what you think. Have a good one. Bye-bye.